Is this typical of, of people who work at DHS? This is an asylum and immigration officer who is posting these, frankly, pro-genocidal slogans and images on the day that Israelis are being slaughtered in their beds. What have you done about this? Your question to suggest that it, that is emblematic of the men and women of the Department of Homeland Security is despicable. Number I'm sorry, two. what have you, this person works for the Department of Homeland Security. Have you fired her? You have employees who are celebrating genocide and you are saying it's despicable for me to ask the question? Has she been fired? That individual has been placed on administrative leave. So Number she's one. not been fired. Well, that was our next guest, confronting President Biden's Homeland Security Secretary, Alejandro Mayorkas, over anti-Semitic comments supporting Hamas, posted by a Homeland Security officer on social media, as Rich just mentioned. Missouri Senator Josh Hawley is a Republican on the Homeland Security Committee. Uh, Senator Hawley, thanks for being on. Good morning. I want to get your reaction to that um, back and forth and, and, you know, what you took away from that exchange. Well, what I took away, Brett, is that this individual is still on the payroll of DHS, which means that she's still getting paid with U.S. taxpayer dollars. Here's what's equally concerning. She is an asylum and immigration officer who boasted on LinkedIn that she handles many, many refugee cases. I asked the secretary, how many cases has she handled? Has she handled cases involving Jewish applicants? Has she handled cases involving applicants who may have ties to Hamas? And he wouldn't answer me. I said, have you conducted a review of all of her cases? I think the answer to that is no. I mean, this is really extraordinary to have this kind of a person on the payroll deciding these critical cases and DHS doesn't appear to be doing anything about it. Senator, you've grilled Secretary Mayorkas before on border questions. You've, um, I mean, there's no love lost there. I think you've called for him to, to step aside. Uh, after that exchange, he had this response. Take a listen. Perhaps he does not know that I am the child of a Holocaust survivor. Perhaps he does not know that my mother lost almost all her family at the hands of the Nazis. And so I find his adversarial tone to be entirely misplaced. I do not expect an apology, but I did want to say what I just articulated. Did it change your perception after he said that? I, I find his evasiveness totally, completely unacceptable. And frankly, the idea that he would try to insulate himself from accountability. We're talking about people employed at his department. We are talking about people who are under his charge and his responsibility to the American public and, yes, to Jewish Americans who, frankly, Brett, fear for their lives. And to know that there is a pro-terrorist, pro-Hamas sympathizer making immigration and asylum decisions and to have no answer to that, to have no response, to have taken no meaningful action, I think is totally inexcusable. And he clearly had no answers yesterday. Senator, great to have you on the show. I want to also ask you. you about the funding fight to come that is underway uh, right now on Capitol Hill. The Wall Street Journal writing this, that the Biden administration has a spending choice, guns or butter, saying that Biden now wants Congress to help allies win two wars abroad and deter a third over Taiwan, yet he wants to continue to spend on everything as if nothing in the world has changed. Do you have ideas on where you would like to see some significant cuts in the budget if the wars are to get funded? Well, listen, I thought that the House's idea to immediately cut those 87,000 IRS agents who Biden never should have hired in the first place, I thought that's a great idea. I'm all for cutting the IRS, and if we can use that money to help our ally Israel, so much the better. I'll just tell you, in terms of our priorities, Israel right now is facing an existential threat. Everybody agrees Israel needs aid. I think we should get that done immediately, this week. Let's get that done. Then we can talk about Ukraine, the border, Taiwan, all the other things the administration's asked for. One other thing, Dana, I am a hard no on any funding for Gaza until every American hostage is home. That money will go into the hands of Hamas terrorists. They are holding our hostages. Those good Americans need to come home. It's interesting you bring that up. I don't have it with me, but I read this morning that Secretary Antony Blinken writes an op-ed in the Washington Post saying that Israel needs the aid, but he says that the humanitarian aid must go to Gaza as well. And I can see your point, right? So it's not as if the Brits we're providing humanitarian aid to German civilians. That's one of the analogies that has been made. But there's going to be a lot of pushback on that. Is it possible that you could get this 
funding through with just the military aid to Israel? I think so. I think it is possible, and I think that is the thing to do, Dan. I think we need to aid our ally and partner Israel right now. My position on Gaza is this. That money will go into the hands of Hamas. Hamas is the effective government in Gaza. In fact, just yesterday, Secretary Blinken testified before the Senate that there would inevitably, inevitably be some, I think he used the word spillage, of the money, any aid to Gaza, mm -hmm. into the hands of terrorists. Mm -hmm. Why would we do that, Dana, when they are holding our hostages? I hear you. Yeah. You know, Senator, really quickly, we had the sure. ambassador to Ukraine on earlier, and she said, clear and simple, if we don't support Ukraine, Russia will win. Do you agree with that statement, and where do you think Ukraine funding is? We have supported Ukraine, Brett, to the tune of $113 billion. I am not in favor of additional funding to Ukraine, particularly not when, number one, there is no watchdog tracking all of the money. We need an accounting of every dime that has been spent in Ukraine. The administration tells us they now have significant corruption concerns. Well, let's see where our money's being spent, number one. Number two, our European allies have still spent far below, particularly on military aid to Ukraine. Brett, we've got to say to them that they must take the lead in defending Ukraine and in defending the European continent. We have to shift our focus militarily to the Pacific. We are going to have to do that sooner or later. We need to level with them right now and say they have got to step up and take the lead. Senator Hawley, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.